Hey, Reality Programmers, Denny Van here. Today I want to talk about reprogramming your inner light after a spiritual attack. So first we're going to talk about the definition of what a spiritual attack is and signs that you are experiencing a spiritual attack. And then identifying the sources of an attack and then reprogramming your inner light and clearing your energy field. So first off, the definition of a spiritual attack. So there's many ideas of what this is out there. From my experience, a spiritual attack is an attack on a person's spiritual well-being. So this can be a term that is used to describe an experience or a situation in which a person, their spiritual well-being, it, it feels like it's being targeted or compromised by external forces. And so this can come in many forms and can be caused by a variety of factors, such as negative energy, entities, and even one's own negative thoughts and emotions. So these can take on the form or manifest as fear, doubt, anxiety, depression, or even physical illness. It can also be caused by spiritual warfare, which is a spiritual battle between good and evil forces. It's kind of like, you know, when there's weather patterns that merge, creating a storm, hot and cold battling it out in a storm. This is what's happening in a, in a realm that we can't see, touch, hear, taste, or smell. Our five senses are pretty much useless, but we have a sense that we must pay attention to. It can also manifest itself in various ways, such as physical, emotional, mental, and relational distress with another person. It can be caused by a variety of sources, including the spiritual realm, negative influences, and these negative influences could be what you're reading, what you're watching on TV or YouTube or Netflix, what you're listening to, what music you're listening to. All of these things can be influences on you, and even your own negative thoughts and emotions are culprits. So some of the signs that you may be experiencing a spiritual attack, first, I have to give a disclaimer that you must rule out any medical issues with your healthcare provider. So if everything else has been ruled out, then some of the symptoms you may experience with a spiritual attack include a feeling of heaviness or oppression, and it could be unexplained physical symptoms. In other words, you try to explain them and figure them out with your medical professional, and they're unexplained. There's just no explanation for them. And some of these symptoms include fatigue, headache. Um, these can be fixed with hydration, but if they're not fixed with hydration, then they're ongoing symptoms as a possible experience of spiritual attack. And so another way is a sense of being watched or followed. And maybe the sudden onset, like all of a sudden you're so depressed or you're having all of these negative thoughts or emotions for no clear apparent reason. Another symptom is difficulty sleeping at night or having nightmares and a feeling of being disconnected from yourself or your purpose and your spiritual path. So it's very important to note that a spiritual attack is not always intentional. You know, we, we talked about a storm. You know, storms aren't intentional. They happen when forces come together. So being caught in a spiritual storm and knowing that it's unintentional. You're caught in a spiritual storm. Take cover. Get an umbrella. Protect yourself. So it's not intentional. Sometimes it can happen due to your surroundings 
and your circumstances, such as your living conditions, being around negative people, or living or working in a place where there's high levels of toxic energy, and also being around an electrical magnetic field. An electric magnetic field could be you're near an outlet that is not grounded completely and it's giving off an electromagnetic field. Sometimes houses can feel like they're haunted, like you're being watched kind of thing in an electromagnetic field. So you want to make sure that all of those sources of the energy have been fixed or explained. And then anything not explained, you can begin to identify the source of the attack. So it's really important to look for patterns and symptoms. These may point you to a specific source. So pay attention, become aware, and also seek spiritual guidance from a trusted source, whether it's your pastor, your counselor, whoever, whomever that is, seek that spiritual guidance. This could include talking to a spiritual leader, a counselor, or even a spiritual advisor. But what's important is that your heart is in the right place and you trust. And then when you seek that guidance, once that guidance is given to you, you need to now apply it. Maybe you're seeking guidance in this video right here, and you're learning some things, and you're getting advice and some guidance on things. Don't stop there. Begin to apply it and use it in your life. So this can help you to provide insight and clarity into the source of the spiritual attack. And usually the source is some type of negative thinking or negative energy. So negative energy can be it can happen by, you can feel this negative energy by paying attention to your feelings and thoughts. So you feel something, you pick up something, and it feels negative. So that's very subjective. We can make it objective by putting it on the pain scale. Zero, hardly any negative energy at all. Ten, oh my God, I can feel this negative energy. It's affecting me mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And I want to just have a side note for, for people who aren't into feelings. I've run into guys where it's like, yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to talk about my feelings or put labels to feelings or anything like that. I get you. I have five brothers. <laughs> but what I'm going to ask you to do is pay attention to your body because it is going to tell you your feelings in two ways. It's either tight or relaxed. So ask your body, tight or relaxed. So when you check in with your feelings, you're checking in with your body and the energy movement in your body. Is the energy movement tightened off, constricted, or is it open and flowing? And it's going to tell you right away what's going on. That's it. That's all I want you to do when I say check in with your feelings. That's it. So nothing too complicated by, you know, flowery, happy feelings and you know, disappointment, sad, anger, putting a label on the feelings. Rather, just check in what's going on with your nervous system in your body. So that's perfect. Now, negative energy can manifest in a variety of ways, including tightness and, and that feeling of um, just constricted and not able to move. But it includes physical symptoms, like we've talked about, fatigue, headaches, but also stomach aches mental and emotional states like pessimism, irritability, anger, fear, like those. And it could also manifest in behaviors like avoidance, procrastination, complaining, blaming. So you want to pay attention to the words and the phrases that you use within your mind to describe your experiences. So as these can often be indicators of negative energy. So you'll be able to find them right there. And take note of the people and situations that leave you feeling drained and exhausted. It's like every time I go to so-and-so's house, I'm so tired afterwards. Pay attention to that. 
pay attention to those feelings and pay attention to any patterns or cycles of negative energy that you may be experiencing. Some people report that they're more full of negative energy when it's around a new moon cycle. This is a good time to purge or cleanse any negative experiences. And also recognizing and understanding the signs of negative energy. When you're able to recognize and become aware, then you can begin to take the steps to address it. Because it's not if it happens, but when it happens, right? We might have already experienced some kind of feeling of a spiritual attack, but negative thoughts can also create a negative energy within oneself, which can attract negative energies or entities. So this can make one more vulnerable to spiritual attack and can make it harder to maintain a positive and healthy well-being because that has to be your number one priority. And so negative thoughts can also create a self-fulfilling prophecy. This is when negative thoughts can lead to negative actions, which in turn reinforce those negative thoughts kind of thing. You know, you start to spiral down. Yeah, it's a thing. This can lead to a ferocious and vicious cycle that can be difficult to break out of and can lead to more severe issues such as anxiety and depression. So if at any time you're feeling those things, do seek out the guidance and the medical attention that you need. Don't put it off because you can reprogram your inner light after a spiritual attack. And the best way to deal with a spiritual attack is to be proactive and take the steps to protect and strengthen your spiritual well-being. So this can include practices such as meditation. Yeah, yeah, you've heard that one before. It was just take five, ten minutes out a day. Now you have to do it. You have to follow through. You have to commit to yourself and you have to do it. Being in the state is going to want you not to do it. So just recognize the behaviors that will come up and say, oh, there's the behavior that is making me want to procrastinate meditation. Recognize it and then do it anyway. Other things you can do is energy work, qigong, tai chi, reiki, those kind of things on yourself for your own energy system. Journaling is a great way to become aware of the source of this negative energy, getting it out of you on paper and being connected with a spiritual community. Find your tribe. It is so important to have that foundation of community because if you're surrounded by people who don't get you and think you're all woo-woo, you know, that's their prerogative to have that opinion, but it's not doing you any good in supporting the foundation of you. So community is so important. And it's also important to address and heal any emotional or psychological issues that may be contributing to the feeling of a spiritual attack. So again, this is kind of a trial and error kind of thing. Okay, you go to your doctor, you try this thing. You go to this specialist, you try this thing. You go to that person, you try something. Oh, this works. Okay, I keep working on that. Then something. It's a continuous exploration of experiencing what works, what doesn't work. You are your own scientific experiment. So these spiritual attacks can be reprogrammed by using the state of consciousness. And that includes the state of prayer. And I'm not talking about prayer like, dear God, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz, my friends all drive Porsches. Not that kind of prayer. This is the kind of prayer that is a state of being. You are putting yourself in a state of consciousness called prayer and then showing by imagery or visualization and we're going to get into that in in that 
state of consciousness or state of prayer. And the more things that can be used to help you reprogram is positive affirmation because the word is a spell, is a program. The words you choose are so important. And so positive thinking in the now. I am professional. So if you're at work and having a hard time because it's a toxic environment, you can say positive affirmations to yourself. I am professional. And all of your professional training will be right there at the surface right when you need it so that you're not reactive or absorbing what's going on in this environment. So these, these, these positive affirmations are a tool to reprogram and also positive thinking. You know, positive affirmations and positive thinking do go hand in hand because you start to use your affirmations as you're thinking. You find yourself off on thinking something negative and then you come back with your positive affirmation. This is a reprogramming process. Self-hypnosis and seeking spiritual guidance are also wonderful ways. But what is important is to practice self-care and maintain a healthy lifestyle to help protect you against spiritual attacks. This is your best defense. So reprogramming your inner life involves changing the way you think about yourself and the world around you. You know, not saying that's a narcissistic person, that's negative, that's bad. So you're reprogramming your thoughts around your environment around you. And it also involves taking responsibility over your actions and your thoughts, your judgments, your opinions, and your life. And recognizing that we have the power to create and program your own reality. It also involves recognizing that you are a powerful creator and you have the ability to create the life you desire. And it involves understanding that you are the one who is in control of your life and you have the power to create new possibilities. Not blaming, you ruined my life. No person can ruin your life. Your choices ruin your life. And it involves the power of recognizing the power of your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs, and learning how to use them to create the life you are. They are tools for you to use. We can look at them as stepping stones or stumbling blocks. You get to choose. And it also involves learning how to think positively. And if you have the habitual habit of thinking negatively, it's going to take some work to shift over into finding the positive, even in the worst negative situations. And how to use affirmations and visualization to create, you are a creative being, to create the life you desire and understanding the power of your subconscious mind and learning how to reprogram and create the life you want. It is possible. You can program, just like I program a Roku channel or I program a website to be accessible or using language from one language to another, there's programming tools and formulas. We are no different. So learning how to use it as a tool to create the life you desire. And it involves learning how to manifest your dreams and desires into reality. This is a skill that can be learned. And one of the first things we wanna do is clear and cleanse your energy field and your space. So clearing out your energy field is a practice that can help you to Reconnect with your true self and to release any negative or stagnant energy that you might be holding on to or your space is holding on to. So it's a powerful practice that can help you create a strong and clear energy field and to bring more balance and harmony into your life. 
So there are many different ways to clear your energy field. Let me know what tools you use in the comments. But I would like to share with you some of the things that I've learned. And I want to let me know in the comments, you know, if you like what you're seeing and hearing and learning on this channel, take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. Doing just that will help our channel tremendously. So some of these things for clearing your energy field include meditation. Yeah, we already talked about meditation, but meditation is a powerful tool for clearing out your energy field and it can help you become more mindful, slow you down, become more aware, less reactive within your energy field and release any negative or stagnant energy that might be present. Another way is visualization. It's a powerful tool for clearing your energy field, using your focus, awareness, and attention to direct the energy clear, to clear your energy field with visualization. So you can use visualization to create a strong and clear energy field around you and invite in positive energy into your life and into your field. Another way is through aromatherapy. It can be used to clear your energy field. I love using essential oils like lavender, frankincense, sandalwood. These can be used to create a calming and peaceful atmosphere and to help clear your energy field and use its higher frequency to raise your vibration because essential oils are a higher frequency. Also, speaking of frequency, healing sounds can be a wonderful, powerful tool for clearing not only your energy field, but your space. Using sound and vibration can help create a strong and clear energy field to help release those negative, stagnant energy thoughts or anything negative that might be present. One thing that I like to do is I practice drumming and chanting. So you need to find out what works for you. And finding some music that has frequencies or vibrations in it is a wonderful place to start. And another thing you can do is energy work. I mentioned before Reiki. It's just one powerful tool. And it is a, a really a powerful healing modality that can be used to clear your energy field. It can help create a strong and clear energy field to bring about balance and harmony into your life. So it's important to remember that Clearing your energy field is a process, and it may take some time to create a strong and clear field that you desire. You feel grounded, safe, secure. You don't need anything outside yourself. So this is a continuous practice, but what is important is the moment you become aware something's off balance. You now have the tools that you can use to reprogram yourself. This is important because with consistent practice and commitment to your self-care, you can create a strong and clean energy field and bring more balance and harmony into your life while protecting yourself from a spiritual attack. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. And I want to know in the comments what you love and what you would love more of. And in the meantime, keep being amazing. Mm -hmm.